fighting games are more difficult than any other genre. That has been a topic of discussion for a long time now. And these discussions only seem to happen more and more often. The people on the outside seem to have this impression that to play fighting games, even on a basic level, you need to have amazing reflexes, great memory, incredible hand-eye coordination. Basically, it's like you need to be some sort of superhuman to play them. Even some people within the FGC tend to agree, because they want more people to play fighting games, but don't believe that anyone can pick up and play these games the way they can with other genres. As always, the truth is somewhere in the middle. On one hand, you could dispel this notion by remembering how you started playing video games, right? None of us were good, we were just mashing with friends or even against the CPU, but it was so much fun to do that, that we kept going deeper into it. On the other hand, there are some factors that make getting into fighters more difficult. It's not like shooters or MOBAs are easy. Sure, you can get carried since these are team games, but they also benefit from gameplay overlap with other titles. Wolfenstein is very different from Quake, and Quake is very different from CS. But if you play even one shooter, the absolute basics will be familiar to you. It's not like fighting games are entirely alien by comparison, the concept of pressing buttons to move and attack is simple. But in the mainstream you won't really find any meaningful overlap that would make fighting games feel instantly familiar. However, a much bigger issue is that fighting games simply suck at teaching you how to play. And that's what we want to talk about in today's video. Uh, before we begin, if you end up enjoying the video, please consider dropping a sub. Cheers! If we take a look at the beginner experience in modern fighting games, uh, what do we see? In most cases, they will only tell you the absolute minimum. Like how to move, how to attack, what does the bar on the top mean, and how to block. After that, many of these games will typically have you fight the CPU, and then you're basically good to go. For someone new to the genre, just explaining controls and that you have to reduce the opponent's HP to zero is not nearly enough. You could argue that we had even less in the past, yet fighting games were still popular. However, the way people interact with games has changed a lot compared to back then. If you were going to the arcades, you were limited to whatever caps they had, and if you had a console at home, I would bet most of you weren't getting new games every single week or even every month. It helped a lot to extend the lifespan of games, and developers didn't have to think too much about the friction between the game and the player. It's not like they would stop playing fighting games because Outrun is much easier. These days, if a game requires too much extra effort to enjoy it, people can just go back to hundreds of unplayed games and their library, or dozens of other titles that don't give them homework before they can have their fun. It doesn't help that much of that competition is free. However, this doesn't mean that fighting games should be easier. It just means that they should tell you more about themselves, and do it in a more comprehensive fashion. We all know that to be a better player, you need to know more than just the controls and mechanics. And yet, how many fighting games do you know that would teach you the strategic or tactical elements of a fighting game? How many of them bother to explain fighting game terminology and concepts the same way in Phil did with his amazing glossary website? And of course, how many of them actually try to engage you in the learning process instead of simply dumping text on you? And you know what the worst part is? Most of them have already shown that they could do better. Some of the earliest examples of high effort modes and tools to teach people how to play existed all the way back in the 90s. Namco made an entire beat em up for Tekken 3, and it was a great way to become more familiar with what your character can do. People who used to work on older Tekken games also made Tobo 1 and 2. Both of those games featured RPG modes that added variety to the game while also relying on the game's base mechanics. If you want an example of a great tutorial, look no further than Guilty Gear. In XArt, instead of making you follow boring instructions, it's more like you're just playing a game. And this is what a good tutorial does, it engages you in the process. Instead of jumping because the game told you so, you jump to overcome an obstacle. It's a more fun and interactive way to learn things. The only problem is that fighting game developers seem allergic to learning from others or even themselves. Tekken has abandoned Tekken Force and has not replaced it with anything meaningful. 
Strife's tutorial and challenges are a notable step down from XArt. What if I told you that Schoolgirls and Killer Instinct had hitbox and a frame data display over 10 years ago? And yet, neither of those are standard features for modern fighting games. Hell, Bandai Namco had the audacity to ask money for it. There are so many examples of this. Replay Takeover, amazing feature, was first seen in 2014 when fans revived Eternal Fighter Zero. But okay, few have heard of it until it was added to Plus R in 2021. Since then, it's still not one of the staples, not even in the Arxis games. And the same applies to replay tips, matchup tips, combo maker, mini games, game speed, online practice modes, and other things that already exist. I think most of us would agree that it would be great to have more people enjoy fighting games. But at the same time, you don't want to do that by watering them down or by trying to appeal to people who don't like fighting games to begin with. That's why it's important to instead focus on great tutorials, great onboarding, on giving people as many tools as they could need to get into, learn and enjoy the game. There's a lot more to this topic, but that's all we have for you today. Thank you for watching and see you next time.